मैं तो उम्मती हूँ शाहे ओ मम कर दे मेरे आका अब नजरे करम मैं तो उम्मती हूँ शाहे ओ मम कर दे मेरे आका अब नजरे करम मैं तो उम्मती हूँ शाहे ओ मम कर दे मेरे आका अब नजरे करम मैं तो बेसहारा हूँ दामन भी है खाली नवियों के नबी तेरी शान है निराली मैं तो उम्मती हूँ शाहे वेलकम टू अनदर प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन सर विस्मा कर in this presentation my dear friends we are going to see how we can design the services that we are providing services are processes and they are delivered to the customers and you see many different customers will come and buy the services and we have to make sure that the same pattern is followed in giving the services to the customers for one customer you give the service in one way for another customer in a different way for a third customer in a third way if you do this you will not be able to make any profits therefore the marketers as well as the operations managers have to make sure that the services are designed properly you have to design them and you have to do something called standardizing them you want to book a flight for example and for everyone it will be in the same way you want to go and book a number in order to meet a doctor in a hospital there will be so many stages involved and everybody will be facing the stages in the same way why because the service delivery process has been standardized has been standardized why this is a big problem or particular problem you see this is a product and you may be manufacturing millions and millions of specs like this all these can be in the same shape same size as as far as the product is concerned it will be very easy but if you see the services there are there are so many people involved and then you see they are intangible also and customer and the service provider become co producers in services and therefore there are difficulties in standardizing them so to the maximum possible extent how we can do this that is what we are going to discuss today now when we take services as we know they are processes and uh, there are different types of services and these services are undergoing processes and these processes can be basically divided into four categories what are those four categories number one is we say people processing what is the meaning of people processing when the service delivery involves the physical structure in other words the body of the people we call it as what we call it as people processing for example you need comfort in staying in a hotel you go and book a hotel and stay there this is a service which is what we call people processing somebody is sick and he is going to the doctor and getting treatment who is staying in the hospital and getting treatment this is what processing uh, people processing then we see that uh, possession processing possession processing means the possessions that you have the tangible possessions that you have right if you do any services on them in that case you call it as what processing possession processing for example somebody has a car and this car has to be serviced he or she is going to the service station in order to service the car this is known as what processing possession processing you have a computer your computer is having some trouble and you go to the computer repair person and get it repaired and this is possession processing so on on tangible assets if you get any services you call it as what you call it as possession processing my dear friends the third one is you call it as mind stimulus processing this is where your mind is involved in people processing body is involved in mind stimulus processing what is involved the mind is involved 
For example, psychotherapy. Somebody is having some psychological problem. He or she is under some stress. He or she wants relief. And he is going to the psychiatrist for a counseling purpose. So this is related to the mind. If you see education, that is related to the mind. If you see, uh, for example, uh, uh, we say advertising. The field of advertising, this is related to the mind. And this type of processing, this type of services we say, are uh, known as what, what processing, we call it as mind stimulus processing. And fourthly, we have information processing. Information processing involves intangible assets. Okay, for example, banking. For example, you can say legal services, accounting services. In accounting services, you give your accounts to, to the auditor and he will be preparing your accounts. This is related to information. So, my dear friends, whatever the type of process you take, maybe it is people processing or physical uh, position processing, mind stimulus processing or information processing, whatever that you take, you see there are going to be so many steps. So you have to clearly identify these steps. For example, you go to the hotel, you want to stay there for a day. So what do you do? You go and park in the car park, then you go to the reception and then you, you are asking information about rooms. What type of rooms you have? Okay, we have such and such rooms, they say, the receptionist is saying. Right, now you decide about booking a room. Right, they want you to wait there for a short while. And then maybe the room is to be prepared a little bit now in order to give you... So you wait for a short while there, in the meantime the room is ready. You go to the room, then you go and stay in the room. And then maybe you go for dinner, you have a good sleep. And then you go for breakfast in the morning. And after that you check out. In this simple process, you see, there are so many steps involved. This is an example that I took for uh, people processing. What is the next example I told you? Next type of processing? Ah, possession processing. Can you tell me an example for possession processing? Yes, you can see so many examples. I will tell you one example. You want to service your car, as I told you earlier. Okay, you go to the service station. Then you ask the details whether I can put the car for service today. They say yes. How much you will charge? What oil you will use? How long it will take? All this information you ask initially. And okay, you leave the car there. It takes about four or five hours. So you leave the station and you go to work. In the meantime, the car is being serviced. Okay, after five hours, for example, you come back to the station then make the payment that is involved here and then you pick the car, you drive the car from the station. So what I want you to understand is any service is a process and this process has multiple steps involved. There are, there are steps. Okay. And the third example that I told you is mind stimulus processing. Okay, tell me an example for mind stimulus processing now. Example number one. Okay. Example number two, example number three, I will tell you an example. You want to follow a course and you are going to an institute and then you at the beginning greet them or they greet you and then you ask the details. How is this course? How long it will take? Does it have a good recognition? Okay, what are the job opportunities after this? Who are the lecturers? What about your timetable? How much I have to pay? How much is the exam fee? All these verifications you make at the beginning. Two or three courses, one of them you want to follow and finally you decide that I want to follow this course. Then what do you do? You fill in an application, you make the necessary payments and then you do the registration. Okay, then you start coming to the classes on a regular basis. You study very hard and then you sit for the examinations and then you get the results and you get the you go for the graduation and now you are qualified. Maybe it takes a longer period of time, but you will understand that there are steps involved in this. Okay, right. What is the fourth uh, problem, a fourth step of processing I told you? That is information processing. For example, you want to give uh, you, you want to give some, uh, uh, what shall we say, you want to get some legal advice or you want to get a deed done, land deed done through a lawyer. 
So what do you do? You go to the lawyer. You meet the lawyer. First you give all the facts regarding the contract that you are, you are going to make. Or regarding the document that you want. You give all the necessary facts. And then they will say, okay, come after two days. And they will do the preparation of the deed within those two days. After two days you go to that office and then you collect the document by making the necessary payment involved. So my dear friends, where are you now? What do you understand from all what I told you up to this point of time? Right, I think you will understand that services are different types of processes, where different involve, involvements are there. Then these processes have different steps. That's a very important thing I want you to understand. Step sign one. Now, you identify these steps one by one. Take a service for example. Identify the steps involved here. And now you can write them down. So now you have a clear picture. And now this, these steps are to be converted into a diagram which says that okay this is the first step this is step number two this is number three this is number four and this is the end result for example four steps here so when you have a chart or diagram like this it is known as a flow chart you call it as a flow chart flow chart will show in a simple way what and what steps are involved in the delivery process of a service you understand so now you are clear okay these are the these are the steps involved so every step you can see what action I can take in order to make sure that a quality service is provided and the customer satisfaction is guaranteed you understand so what do you call this chart uh, this is called flow chart and the process so action of producing a flow chart is called flow charting you call it as what? Flow charting. Now, my dear friends, we will become a little bit advanced now. Now, in flow charting, uh, you know, uh, you show the steps involved in a process of delivering the service. Now, we go to something a little bit sophisticated. The sophisticated or advanced version of flow chart is called blueprint. What do you call? blueprint how to do this blueprinting now you see blueprinting is a detailed diagram that shows the complex parts of delivering a particular service in a very comprehensive manner you take a broader look and a deeper look at a service delivery process and produce a different chart which is more advanced than the flow chart now if you take a service for example there are so many parties involved right there are so many individuals involved these people are called players okay what do they play they play different roles right in what they play different roles in providing the service or in producing the service somebody got to take maybe he or she did not maintain brushing properly so he has got toothache now and where, where will you go you will go to the dentist okay you go to the dentist and then you go and tell the receptionist that I want to see the dentist she will give you a number she will give you a token he or she will give you a token and then you wait there for some time and then your number will be called right now you go inside and you meet the dentist and you show your teeth okay and he will do whatever that is necessary now you see there are many steps involved look now who are the players involved here one is yourself who are you at this moment you are the patient the one who has the problem okay patient number two is the you went and met whom at the beginning receptionist okay receptionist and you went inside the room and who was there? The dentist was there and the dentist also was having an assistant. There are four players involved in producing this service. And this service delivery also involves a process which has multiple steps. Now what should you do? Oh, 
these steps are to be identified and every step should be written and then you you know you can uh, you can adjust them and produce the sequence produce the sequence in which the steps are taking place what is step number 1 what is step number 2 what is step number 3 like this you know you produce the sequence and each step how it takes place what is happening there right what is the importance of that everything you write down and then convert your writing into a particular diagram which is what we call blueprint and this action is known as blueprinting okay once the list is ready once the sequence is ready you can give a copy of them to the players involved oh dentist you take a copy of this receptionist you take a copy and give a copy to the attendant give a copy to the patient also who can contribute in developing the service and what are the changes that we have to make what are the improvements that are to be made is anything missing okay you can ask these questions and get more and more details and then make the necessary changes in your blueprint and enrich and do value addition of the blueprint are you understanding now do you understand that now you have a very comprehensive picture a clear picture about how the service is provided is that clear for you this has to be very clear for you so when you have a diagram like this you know it's very clear for everybody involved here on how the service is delivered and every time you can follow the diagram in delivering the service as a result of that there will be standardization the service is designed and standardized once you standardize a service my dear friends what should you do now time to time when people do it there may be situations where when there is no proper reminding the deviations are going to slowly creep into the system little by little you deviate you have to go here but you make a small deviation this should not be allowed to continue because it will end up somewhere else so what should you do you have to design the service you have to remember this designing then you have to do standardizing and then you have to manage the service you have to manage the service if you look at a flow chart uh, some places you will have a circle and within the circle you put f these are known as fail points what do you call fail points not pass points fail points why you call them as fail points because these are the crucial points of the service delivery process in case if there is a failure in this point what will happen you know there will be uh, there will be uh, the customer will not be able to enjoy the consumption of the corporate act that will be an utter failure that will be a total failure these are vital points these are crucial points and then you know very careful action should be taken to ensure that there aren't any problems taking place so my dear friends when you do the uh, blueprint you see when you design the blueprint otherwise if you look at a blueprint in some places you will see a circle within the circle there will be a letter f okay these points are known as fail points right not pass points fail points what do you mean by fail points ah these are the crucial points in the service delivery process in case if there is any mistake or if there is uh, non compliance in this point what will happen you know finally the customer will not be able to enjoy the core product or the service okay that will be a big failure so you have to make sure that there are there is nothing wrong happening in these points right so you have to carefully investigate you know what are the important things to be done during these points and make sure that they are available and ensure that there aren't any mistakes okay in some other places uh, there is a triangle you just google and then you can see a blueprint of a service delivery process what are the signs that they have used you can see there right in some places there is a triangle and within that triangle there is a w letter have you ever noticed 
you are if you can notice now it will be fine you can see one thing is within a circle there is f letter okay now i am talking about a triangle where within the triangle you have w this this indicates waiting possibilities of delay so within the circle they have put f and these are fail points and the these triangles they indicate delays delays will cause waiting so these two are interrelated my dear friends right if there is a failure there can be a delay if there is a failure in servicing a particular aircraft customers will have to wait in the lounge because the flight is getting delayed by 2 hours why it is getting delayed ah because there is a failure in the maintenance timely maintenance of the flight you understand so you have to carefully understand the importance of these fail points as well as the waiting points and make sure that you take massive action for the purpose of preventing these things happening of course you know when you develop the blueprint you see one thing is finally a service is to be delivered blueprint is made and it is a plan on how the service is to be provided to the customer and finally it is to be given to whom given to the customer and who should be satisfied ah it has to be satisfying the customer you put all the blueprint flow chart and everything and finally the customer is unhappy your planning is null and void it is useless now it should not be so so what should happen you have to make sure that your customer is happy making customer happy is the main responsibility of which department accounting department human resource department it department no it is the main duty of what department ah marketing department very good marketing department and in the meantime you have to make sure that you say it is cost effective the service has to be cost effective then only the firm providing the service will be able to make some profit which is their main objective therefore you know that is the responsibility of the operations department so whenever you prepare the blueprint what should you do there should be team work what are the two teams that have to mainly involved into this process of preparing the blueprint ah yes it is the marketing department as well as which department you say operations department then only a uh, you know practical plan can be developed by these two parties as a team okay that can be used once again in standardizing so once again i am emphasizing when you prepare the blueprint you see complex matters are nicely explained by a diagram called blueprint and this blueprint can be followed every time by the people who are involved in delivering the service to the customers and time to time you know what uh, you know there can be deviations whenever there are deviations possible what should you do you have to bring the situation back into the track of the blueprint okay let's always go according to the blueprint that we have any changes that have to be made should be taken into account at the relevant meeting and not as and when you want in that case they won't be standardizing different customers will be served in different ways so hope you understand now the standardizing sorry designing number 2 is what standardizing number 3 is once you have standardized what should you do you have to do the managing of the services okay is it clear for all of you right now we will see yes service redesign service redesign redesign means already the service has been provided by the company by the organization there is a service delivery process now look different people are suggesting who oh, environment is changing customer requirements are changing there are political factors or legal factors or there are some changes to be made in the way you are delivering the service okay so you have to do a redesigning of the service now what do you call this one service 
free designing already design service system be uh, you know altered you have to make some changes in them that's what we call redesign can you tell me why we have to redesign the services for what purposes think of some purposes now what may, what may be the reasons why we have to do the redesigning of the services for example you know uh, we have in the past we have seen that there are some service failures you understand in the past we were doing service we were providing this service but uh, you know there had been some failures so if there are continuous failures what will happen it will be a big loss to the company uh, very big uh, you know decline will be there in the goodwill of the company and therefore you should not allow this to happen once again then in order to reduce the service failures what can happen uh, services can be redesigned okay this is one of the reasons then you know you find that giving a service to the customer takes some extra time so what you can do is uh, you can redesign the service in such a way where the same service is provided in a shorter period of time so to cut down the time involved in providing the service also you will have to redesign your services then as i told you earlier there may be so many people remaining idle uh, in providing the service okay so some players are not giving their maximum capacity there is some idle time there are some idle resources right then the service is unwantedly taking a longer number of hours or minutes or days or weeks okay so what you can do is by properly organizing them properly redesigning them you can increase the productivity you can increase the efficiency efficiency can be improved and for that what should you do you have to make some changes in the pattern of delivery of the service right so the third purpose why you have to redesign the services my dear friends in order to improve what can you say productivity in order to improve productivity then you know that the customers are expecting different things from the company services customers are you know their expectations keep on changing so according to the customer requirements you have to adjust yourself if you don't adjust yourself what will happen oh customers will go to the competitor they will switch over to the competitor and finally you will have to be alone with no customers therefore you must increase the customer satisfaction levels and for that you have to make changes in your services in that case also redesigning will be uh, important and necessary i'm going to tell you now some ways by which you'll be able to do this how to redesign the services right number one is now there are some uh, certain things taking place where they do not add any value to the service so you have to identify what those things are for example you go somewhere and then you have to fill in a form before getting the service you carefully think whether the filling in of the form is actually necessary there all these unwanted processes non value adding elements you remove from the service process this is one way you can design the service okay so that is the first step then uh, what you can do is certain services or a part of the service you can shift to self service right without using your people and providing that service you can make the customer to obtain that service for example certain organizations what do they do they give their services web based and therefore the customer does not have to come and they can obtain the service from the websites so you can switch over to self services thirdly my dear friends uh, delivering direct service that means customer is coming to your place and getting the service now you change this pattern you are going to customer's place and then giving the service right you have a problem somebody has a problem in his uh, uh, laptop for example and then uh, he has to bring it to the laptop repair station now laptop repair station says you wait there itself we will repair it from here by contacting you through team weaver so this is what this is another example for direct service 
Do not make the customer to come to you. You go to the doorstep of the customer and do it for him. So he will be feeling more convenient and happier. So there will be more business for yourself in the future. Right. And then another, another one is bundling the services. Have you heard about bundling my dear friends? Bundling means not one service. So many services are provided together. So many services are given together. That's what we call bundling. Certain services, you know, in order to improve the quality, in order to make the customer more and more satisfied, you can tell, okay, we will give you all these services together, but at a reduced price. For example, somebody wants to have a fasting blood sugar checkup in order to see whether the sugar level has gone up. Right? The laboratory, medical laboratory says that there is a full package. Right? If you go for the uh, single test, it will cost you 500 rupees. But if you go to the full package, where there are seven experiments, it will cost you only 1200 rupees. He'll be happy. You know, you can do so many experiments. Right? With the, maybe the same quantity of blood that is taken. So the customer is going to be very happy. And finally, you can also redesign the physical aspects of the service provision by changing the places, by changing the equipments to suit the requirements of the customers. So these are the different ways that you can do it. My dear friends, hope it is sufficient now. I hope you are not very tired now. Anyway, we will wind up at this moment. Thank you very much for your time. And let's meet again very soon. Wish you all the best.